Spike has a top-down attack capability, multiple modes of firing, tandem warhead and supposedly, an excellent missile that can be corrected or assigned a new target even during mid-flight. Unfortunately, some serious issues were discovered the moment these systems were put to the test in combat conditions in Afghanistan by the Dutch forces subsequent to procurement testing by the German forces. When this missile is fired, it flies upwards to the sky to position itself for a top-down attack. It can then strike the top part of the tank's armor, which is universally recognized as the least armored part of a tank. However, by flying upwards the missile temporarily loses line of sight with its optics, and needs to reacquire a target to lock on when it points its nose downwards again in its fire and forget mode. The Spike ATGM comes in several different versions. Vehicle mounted versions, MR, medium range, and LR, long range, versions. The biggest difference is that the MR version is not controlled by its operator when launched, while the LR allows for in-flight correction by its operator by way of a data link wire. In Europe, armies of various nations had negative experiences with Spike when this system was used in uncontrolled environments or in extensive operations in war zones. In Germany, during the trials, it was discovered that when Spike reaches its top-down attack mode, if there are multiple identical heat sources near the target object, the missile selects the first target its sensors find, ignoring the target selected by the operator. The missile seems to get confused and does one of two things. The missile fails to follow the specified heat source, optical target or it acquires a wrong launch trajectory which cannot be corrected during the flight. As a result, the missile just harmlessly slams into the ground between targets. The only way to ensure accuracy of the spike LR is by having an operator guide the missile every step of the way with its fiber optic data link. The Dutch first tested the spike by putting a large shipping container within its firing range on one of their FOBs in Afghanistan, to try the missile out in combat conditions. Similar to the Germans, they ran into issues with Spike as well. The missile did not always go after its intended target when launched in fire and forget mode. As it turned out, in daylight desert conditions, where the natural environment's temperature is close to the spike's target's temperature, spike is unable to keep track or to reacquire its target in flight, no matter how you fire it. When the Dutch selected the shipping container as the target and fired, the missile, as it came down, could not reacquire the target and came down to the ground a few meters beside it. The Dutch reviewed the firing procedures and tried to hit the shipping container again. On their second attempt the optical tracking failed. The Spike operator noticed the optical sensor of Spike, the same missile sensor the operator uses for targeting prior to launch, could not effectively handle the brightness of the Afghanistan's desert environment, the clear sky and the sun. After testing five missiles in different firing modes and conditions the testing was stopped and the Dutch defense contractors, Erkers and Thales, were notified that the system's guidance does not work in bright environments or on fixed targets that do not radiate enough heat or optical signature in contrast with their surroundings. In other conditions, the missile does not go for its intended target in flight. Not surprisingly, the Dutch forces in Afghanistan discontinued their use of Spike in combat operations. The manufacturer Rafael, along with Urkos and Thales could not come up with a credible explanation as to why this missile is so prone to missing its target when battlefield conditions are less than optimal. The official version was a faulty factory patch and that the manufacturer was working to resolve the problem. Later, Raphael said that the Dutch damaged the missiles themselves through incorrect transportation or handling. Which of course, it is disturbing to know that the missiles are easily damaged in transport let alone combat conditions, especially when they are factory fresh and recently purchased. The spike stays in Afghanistan ended, as fast as they began. The Dutch were allowed to use the control unit with its heat-sensitive clip-on optic for a short while and for nighttime observation only, no more. After two months Spike was taken fully out of the Dutch forces' armament in Afghanistan. 
one cannot help to speculate and assume that what the Germans encountered during procurement testing, is the same problem that the Dutch faced in Afghanistan. That Spike's targeting software and the quality of its optics are far below the standard claimed by its manufacturer. This is also the reason why India faced similar issues during their testing and decided to walk away from this system.